fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver! Mort Dexter was a kindly man, and many a settler in the early West owed his start to the big gruff rancher, whose spread was one of the most prosperous in the Southwest Territory. Mort's wife, Sarah, had been a great influence in his life. She was a quiet, soft-spoken woman whose gentle ways had worn the edges off Mort's gruffness. On occasions, Mort Dexter let his suppressed temper come to the fore, and at such times his rage knew no bounds. But a soft word from Sarah seemed to be an antidote that brought him out of it immediately. But since their daughter Mary Lou had grown to womanhood, his temper flared more often. She was spirited and headstrong at 18, and inclined to do as she pleased. One morning at breakfast, Mary Lou spoke to Mort. Dad, I want a better horse to ride. One with more spirit than Blackie has. Now, Mary Lou, I reckon Blackie will do for the time. He's a good horse for a woman to ride. He's a nice gated horse. He's in handle. That's why I don't want Blackie. I told Dave to saddle the Palomino for me this morning. Now, see here, Mary Lou. That Palomino is hardly broke to the saddle yet. Anyway, a stallion isn't any kind of a horse for a woman to ride. I figure using that Palomino myself after Dave calms him down a bit more. Your father is right, Mary Lou. You'd better keep on riding Blackie. <laughs> Land sakes, even Blackie would have frightened me near to death if I had to ride her when I was a girl. Well, things are different now than when you were my age, Ma. Well, I'll, I'll see you at dinner time. I'm riding over to the Goodsons. All right, dear. Goodbye, Dad. Yeah. And don't worry about my riding. I can really handle a horse as well as you can. Finally getting to realize that when I put my foot down, I mean it. Mm. Honest, Sarah, sometimes I wonder how we come to have such a girl as Mary Lou. <laughs> What's the matter with your eyes? Eh? Can't you see Mary Lou's just like you used to be? That's, well, maybe so. But it seems to me a girl ought to take after her mother. She, she ought to be quiet and ladylike. Like you, sir. Now, darling, maybe two in the family like me would be really... Sir, Nancy, take it. Look at that. We have fallen up. Mary Lou! Mary Lou, come back here! We have fallen at that rather strong hand. Now, it now, Mort, no use losing your temper, dear. Yes, but look, there she goes, riding that Palomino big as life. And right after I told her not to. 
Doesn't she ride him well, Mort? You, you, what? Uh, what's the use? Later that morning, Dave the ranch foreman rode up to Mort as he sat on his horse surveying his large herd of cattle grazing on the south range. Oh, there. Oh, oh. Howdy, boss. I've been looking for you. Hey, Dave. What's on your mind? Well, I just got word that there's an armory figuring on moving on to the Bar W Ranch. In fact, the deal for the place has been settled. Yeah. Well, that ranch has been standing there going to seed since old man Willie's died. I'm glad to hear we'll have neighbors again on the north side. No, if you won't be glad at all, boss. Huh? In fact, I was telling the boys we better do something to stop them moving in there before it's too late. All right, get to the point, Dave. What's wrong with the folks who are fixing to take it over? Sheep herders. Just plain low-down sheep herders. Sheep ranch, yeah? Uh, folks that fool with those ornery dirty critters aren't ranchers, but a long shot. I allows how we better let them know now that they aren't welcome. But that's where you're wrong, Dave. As far as I'm concerned, they are welcome. What? In fact, what? they can use part of our north range for grazing. It ain't much use for cattle anyhow. But it ought to do for sheep, from what I hear about them. Holy mackerel, boss. You, you mean to say you aim to let them bring sheep to that ranch? Why not? I reckon if sheep are what they want, they got the right. It's a free country. Long as they stay good neighbors, I'm willing to be agreeable. Well, I'll be darned. You're the only one who's had a good word to say about it today. Yeah. Folks don't like it, eh? They sure don't. Just what folks, for instance? Well, Hank Grafton, for yes. once. Yes, I recollect when I give Hank a small herd of cattle to make his start. He would have taken a herd of gophers at that time if he thought he'd make money raising them. All right, who else? The town banker, John Garland. Yeah. He owns a small ranch the other side of the bar, W, you know. He's plenty riled up about it. Yeah, Garland is one hombre I never could get to like, Dave. Anyhow, he, he always got peeved when he was going to grab off somebody's ranch for non-payment of mortgage, and I up and paid for him. <laughs> no, sir. John Garland never had any liking for me, either. Well, is that all? Oh, no. There's plenty of others against them sheep herders going in there. Uh, you having the biggest spread and all, they were hoping you'd help to keep them out. Yeah, Dave. You were foreman of my ranch. And you get top wages. And as long as you are, I expect you to see things my way, you savvy? Sure, boss. I was only telling you... Well, now I'm telling you. I say let him come in. What's more, I say any help my hands can give them to get started is theirs if they want it. Get up there. Get up. Several days later, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, pitched camp in the hills outside of the town of Rock Ridge. They had decided to interrupt a journey southward and take a few days to mend worn riding gear to replace loose and worn horseshoes. It was dusk one evening when Tonto returned from the blacksmith shop in town with Scout and Silver. Oh, Scout. Oh, Silver. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. How are you, Kimasabi? Hi. <laughs> well, Tonto, that blacksmith did a fine job. Ah, um, that right. Him work slow, but him do good job. You had a long wait in town. Oh, but me not mine. Me listen round, hear news of town. Oh, well, what's going on? Anything of interest? Men in town talk about sheep rancher who just moved to Bar W Ranch. It north of Dexter spread. Yes, I think I remember the place. Used to be the old Willis Ranch. That's right. New owner named Jed Marshall. Him widower with grown son named Craig. I see. Do you think Jed and Craig Marshall will have any trouble with the cattlemen around Rock Ridge? Well, men in town talk plenty against sheep ranchers, Kimasabi. But me find out people at Dexter spread friendly to sheep rancher. <laughs> More Dexter's like that. He always believed in giving the other fellow a chance. That's right. And Dexter has a lot of influence. As long as he favors the marshals, the rest of the ranchers will stay in line. Me hear feller in town say that. But other men say something not good. Just what was it you heard them say, Tonto? Well, me go into cafe this afternoon, stand in back and listen. Yes? Me hear two men at table near back of cafe talking about sheepmen. Dave, the foreman out of Dexter's place, 
said Mort Dexter gave orders for the cowhands to be friendly to them sheep herders at the Bar W. I already <laughs> heard about that. As long as Dexter stays friendly to him, the rest of the ranchers will let the marshals alone. Dexter has plenty of influence around here. Yeah, that's right. But maybe Dexter will change toward him before long. And when that happens, it'll be too bad for them sheep men. Uh, what makes you think he might change? Mort isn't the changeable kind of armory. And look, John Garland, the banker, is dead sent against them sheep men, as you know. Yeah, we all know that. Well, Garland's been passing the word around that he's got reason to feel that within a week, Dexter will turn against the sheep men at the Bar W Ranch. Uh, where would he get reason to know a thing like that? Garland hates Dexter. Mort Dexter hasn't any love for Garland either. Of course, I wouldn't put it past Garland to pull something that'd make Dexter get sore at the sheepmen. So the town banker, John Garland, is determined to arouse the cattlemen against the marshals. And that's what me think. After me hear men talk, Kimasabi. Well, if Garland did succeed in turning Dexter against the sheep ranch and his son, the other ranches would openly move against them. And that's not good. Yes, I know. Toto, I want you to keep an eye on Garland. Find out all you can and let me know. He seems determined to start a range war. The following evening, Tonto trailed Garland when the banker left town and rode to the small ranch he owned beyond the sheep herder's place. Tonto left Scout in a grove of trees, then cautiously approached the ranch house. Just as he reached the foot of the front porch steps, he heard the door close. Tonto hurriedly ducked into the opening alongside the steps and crouched there. Tonto realized John Garland must have come out to sit on the porch. He was about to crawl out and attempt to get away unseen when a group of men rode up and dismounted. Marty! Hey, come out here to sit. It's too hot inside. Hey, get a couple more chairs up here. Rest you can sit on the porch steps while we talk. As Tonto crouched under the steps, unable to leave, the men settled themselves on the porch and steps. Garland spoke. Uh, this private meeting is to discuss getting rid of the sheep herders. Yeah, nothing much we can do. Dexter's friendly with us. Yes, of course, of course. I know you all want to keep Dexter's friendship. And that he'd get plenty sore if you moved against them sheep herding marshals. That's right, John. Through Mort, we get a good price for our cattle and cheaper shipping rates and all. Yes, I reckon all of you think I had you come out here with the idea of persuading you to go against the marshals, in spite of how Mort feels about it. But that isn't true at all. Then just why did you have us come out here to meet with you? I happen to know Mort met with Jed Marshall and made an agreement with him. What kind of an agreement? Yeah, what are you talking about, John? Mort offered a part of his North Range land to the sheep herder, for one thing. Well, what about it? We all know about that. Well, sure. <laughs> Marshall promised Mort not to let sheep graze on the range to the west or south. Mort said if he ever broke his word, he'd join with the other ranchers and help run the sheep herders out of the territory. Well, look, John. Just what are you driving at? Why did you want us to come out here? All right, now listen a minute, listen. The hands I have here on this place are pretty slick operators when I want to get something done. Uh, yeah. I guess we don't savvy. What if they are slick? Yeah, just this. My men will wait their chance. Then, some night soon, they'll see to it that a lot of marshal sheep are driven onto the West Range where Mort grazes cattle. Yeah. You see? When Mort hears sheep are there... He'll turn against the sheep herders. Hey, man alive. That'll do the trick. Mortal run Marshall out pronto. Right, right. Before the end of the week, those sheep herders will wish they never heard of this Rock Ridge territory. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. After hiding in the shadows and hearing the plan John Garland told to the hostile ranchers who met on the porch of Garland's small ranch house, Tonto quietly but hastily went back to the grove of trees where he had left Scout. Easy, Scout, easy, fella. Me here plenty to tell Lone Ranger. Get him up, Scout! <laughs> When Tonto arrived at the camp, he told the Lone Ranger what he had overheard Garland saying to some of the ranchers. So John Garland is deliberately planning to start a range war between cattlemen and sheepmen. Because if they succeeded in running the marshals away, the news would spread. And trouble would occur in other sections of the southwest. Ah, that man Garland, no good, Kimasabi. We'll see to it that his plan doesn't work, Tonto. From now on, we'll watch Garland and his men every minute. The following day, Mary Lou Dexter rode her Palomino along the trail to the North Range. During the few days she had ridden the stallion, she had become accustomed to handling him and felt quite proud that she had proved her horsemanship in the face of her father's objections. Oh, you and I get along fine together, fella. I'm going to name you Golden Boy. <laughs> oh, Dad was so sure I wouldn't be able to handle him. Oh, easy, Golden Boy. Steady there, fella. Mary Lou tightened her grip on the reins a bit and was pleased to notice that the stallion didn't take advantage of it. But a few minutes later, the sight of a rattler on the trail frightened the horse, and with a sudden side leap, he snorted in fear. Then, taking the bit in his teeth, the panicky horse sprang forward out of control. Whoa there, Pella, whoa! Practically, whoa. she tried to stop the racing Palomino, but it was useless, and she realized that at any minute, the uneven ground might cause him to fall. It was then she saw a horseman cutting across the range to intercept her galloping steed. She called out in fright. Help! Stop him! Reaching out and grabbing the stallion's bridle, Great Marshal gradually brought the frightened horse to a stop. Easy. Come on, boy, easy. Thanks a lot. Yes. Oh, he was suddenly frightened on the trail. I couldn't control him. That's a a lot of horse for a girl to ride, man. Dad told me not to ride him, but I wanted to. Do you always do what you want to? Most of the time. I'm Mary Lou Dexter. Uh, My name's Marshal. Craig Marshal. My dad just moved under the bar W. Oh, you're the sheep rancher's son. Well, that's right. And thanks for calling us sheep ranchers instead of sheep herders like the others do. Well, personally, I don't know much about sheep, but well, Dad approves of having them here, so I'm sure it's as good as raising cattle. Well, thanks again, ma'am. There's money in raising sheep, both for the wool and for the mutton. We sure wish other cattlemen would see things like you and your father, Miss Dexter. Well, after you prove they won't affect cattle raising, maybe they will. I'm certainly glad you came along just now. Frankly, I was a little frightened. I'm glad I came along to it. Gave me a chance to meet you. Maybe you'd uh, let me come to see you sometime. Sure, why not? In fact, if you want to, you can ride along with me back to the ranch. (laughs) Oh, now, that'll be just fine. I'll be plenty glad to, Miss Dexter. Call me Mary Lou. There's no use being formal after practically saving my life, (laughs) Craig. Let's go. All right. Get up, Golden. Come on, get up. That night after supper, Dave the foreman spoke to Mort Dexter as they walked from the corral. Oh, some of the boys saw an hombre ride to the entrance to the ranch this afternoon with Miss Mary Lou. Yeah. And it was that Craig Marshall who rode here with her, the son of that sheep herder at the Bar W. I, uh... I figured you wouldn't like that very much, and that's why I'm telling you about it. Well, listen to me, Dave. Mary Lou picks her own company. As far as I know, Craig Marshall is as good as any other hombre around Rock Ridge. Uh, let's not say any more about it. The foreman, Dave, had been sincere in telling Mort about Craig riding with Mary Lou. He knew the Dexter ranch hands were very loyal to Mort, but he also knew that they talk in town. John Garland made the most of it when he heard the report. <laughs> yeah, things are turning out our way, Hank. The ranchers will be all the more resentful of them sheep herders now. And the minute they hear Mort finds sheep on his cattle range and shows he's riled up at the marshals, the cattlemen will go burn them out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I reckon that's right, John. And it can't happen too soon to suit me. It was the following night when John Garland and Hank left town and rode out to the ranch he owned near the Bar W. 
They didn't know that they were trailed by a masked man and Indian who waited in a nearby clump of cottonwoods while John went into the small ranch house to see the ranch manager. A short time later, the two men left the ranch house and walked to the bunkhouse. The Lone Ranger waited until they had entered the bunkhouse. Then he spoke to Toto in a low voice. Toto, we'll leave the horses here and see if we can get close enough to one of the windows to hear what he tells these men. Let's go. Uh -huh. Moving like shadows, the masked man and Indian soon reached the side of the bunkhouse and crouched beneath an open window. John Garfield was speaking to the man inside. There only two sheep herders out there. I know about where each of them camps when he's tended the sheep. I'll point them out to you, then you can sneak up and get the drop on them. What do we do with them? Tie them up. At dawn, after the sheep have been driven to the West Range, a couple of them come back and let them loose. He'll tell what happened, and Dex will know it was a frame up. When you untie them, tell them to hit the trail pronto and leave Rock Ridge. Tell them if they talk or stay around, the ranchers will hang them. Yeah. Now, when someone from Dexter's place sees those sheep in the morning, Dexter will figure Marshal pulled a fast one. He'll turn against him or the others. They'll be coming out in a minute. We'll get back to the horses before they spot us, Toto. Uh -huh. Reach, both of you. What? I got you covered. See. I'll take the guns from you, snoopers. The Lone Ranger waited, tense and ready, as the man who had sneaked up behind him and Toto approached to take his guns. Then, as the would-be captor reached out toward the masked man's holster, the Lone Ranger suddenly kicked back, at the same time throwing himself to one side. That will do it. As the man with a gun bent over momentarily with pain, the Lone Ranger swung around and landed a hard, forceful blow to his chin. I take it. Oh, oh you move plenty fast, Kimasabi. Him out cold now. Yes, but the others heard the noise. Let's get going. Hurry. Why, Silver? And what we do now? I'll follow Garland and his men. You ride to Dexter's ranch. Tell him sheep are being driven to the West Range. Don't tell who's driving them. Now, he's happy. When Dexter and his men get there, they'll catch Garland and his men red-handed. Otherwise, he'd never believe it. Get going now and hurry. Get him up, Scott. While Toto rode to Mort Dexter with the news, John Garland and his men had gone ahead with their plan. They had caught the two sheep tenders unawares and had tied them up. After demolishing part of the newly erected fence, they started driving the sheep toward the West Range. The Lone Ranger waited on Silver behind a large boulder back up the trail and watched what was going on. Finally, he heard hoofbeats approaching along the trail. Oh, must be Tonto with Dexter and his men. I'll go and meet them. All right, come on, Silver. Wait a minute! Hold Silver, hold Silver. Craig, it's a mask man. Cover him, man. He's one of them. Don't let that owl hoot stop us. No. Craig! Somebody must have hired a bunch of outlaws to drive them sheep to get us into trouble. Yeah, it looks like it. Dad, I'll gun this hombre down so as we can get there and turn back the sheep. Hold it. Hey, hey, hey. Did you see that quick draw? He can't fight all of us. No, well, I could try if necessary. Now, listen, just one minute. Oh, wait, everybody. Hear what he has to say. Uh, how did you find out about this? Well, I rode over and told them. They have to stop the drive before my father gets here. You must be Dexter's daughter. That's right. I sent an Indian friend to get your father to come here. Uh, yes, an Indian did come to tell me. I know you're the marshals. The men driving those sheep are doing it to turn Dexter against you and arouse a cattleman. If you drive them off now and Dexter comes with his men, he'll still think you sheepmen are to blame. What do you get at, mister? You stand to cover until after Dexter and his men arrive and catch Garland. Garland? Yes, that's right. He's the one who planned this. I'm not an outlaw, believe me. I'm here to prevent a range war. And to see that you sheep ranchers get a fair deal. Don't play into Garland's hands by going out there now. Uh, Craig, I like this masked man's talk. It makes sense. I say let's wait and hide until Dexter gets here and finds Garland and his bunch of coyotes. I agree with Mr. Marshall. All right, mister. We'll do as you say. Good enough. Get your men off the trail and out of sight. Dexter should be here soon. Then, if necessary, you can help him drive off those troublemakers. All right, come on. All right. A short time later, Garland sat with the other rancher, Hank, watching in satisfaction as his men drove the sheep toward the West Range. Suddenly, they were startled by shooting as a large group of men closed in on them. Hey, somebody found out what we're doing. Hey, I have to get away fast. I can't afford to be caught here with them. Let's keep going quick. Get away. Go. Get 
Garland and Hank started down the trail, two figures came from behind the boulders and started after them. Get out there! Racing after the fleeing men, the Lone Ranger and Craig Marshall gradually closed up on them. Use your lariat, Craig! All right! Simultaneously, two snake-like lariat shot forward and settled around the shoulders of Hank and Garland, dragging them from their saddles. Got them closer to the road! Oh, 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 oh. Easy, big fella. All right, come on. Short, I'm with you. Oh, my shoulder. Garland, you, you got me into this. Get up, both of you. Taking you back so Mort Dexter can see who started all of this. All right, get up. A short time later, Garland's men were rounded up and surrounded by Dexter and his ranch hands. Well, looks like we got all the coyotes, men. Now we'll make him tell if they was hired by Marshal. Hey, look. A masked hombre. Well, him, friend, me tell you about. Oh, 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 oh. Dexter, we brought you two more. One of them is the man who planned this. Look him over. Hey. John Garland. Why, that dirty low town coyote. Look, Mart, it was all John's idea. Hey, and Hank Grafton, the man I gave a start to. Garland and a few others planned to turn you against the sheepmen, so the ranchers would be free to run them out. Well, Mart, looks like you didn't need our help. I was sure they wouldn't break uh, their word to you, Dad. Well, it's a good thing we got here first and found out the truth. I'm taking my funds out of Garland's bank, and the other cattlemen will do the same. He's through in Rock Ridge. The marshals will make good neighbors, Dexter. Let's go, Toto. Montilde! Get him up. That masked man and Indian did us sheepmen a mighty good turn. <laughs> yep, especially you, Craig. But I reckon now you and Mary Lou can go on seeing each other a lot, eh? Why, uh... I've already decided that, Dan. Eh? Always a few jumps ahead of me, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't notice that Craig is riding the Palomino. You see, that stallion will soon belong to uh, both of us. <laughs> of course, the masked man did make it easier for us by keeping you friendly with the sheep men. I wonder who he is. <laughs> well, I'm ahead of you on that, Mary Lou. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll do it. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.